Hello everybody and welcome. This is Chess24 and we are live and we are going to be covering the Bilbao Masters and European Club Cup which are taking place at the same time in the lovely city of Bilbao. Where else? I just said the Bilbao Masters. So if you didn't get that, really you need another coffee. I'm Lawrence Trent, this is Jan Gustafsson. He's very blue, dabba dee, dabba die today. Mm. For all our younger viewers, you won't get that because that song came out in... 2099? I'm blue, double D, double die. You don't remember that? I know that song. Yeah. What, yeah, what it's a long time ago. Long time ago. Tweet us. I'm blue, double D, double die. it? Sounds familiar. I feel something. Tweet us. We want to hear from you. Hashtag C24. Let's talk about what Let's we talk. got today. Yeah. We got Vichy Anand sitting pretty on two out of two. One is first two games. He's facing Levon Aronian. World number two. We've talked about his recent struggles. Aronia in the past has been a bit of a Vichy nemesis, had a huge score. I think he went up 6-1 to one in decisive games at one point. But Vichy's made a bit of a comeback. He yeah. beat him the last time they played Correct. in the candidates with White. And he also won this very nice game, for those of you who haven't seen it, in Vikings 2013 with Black, one of the modern classics. He sacrificed pretty much all his pieces in his semislav and checkmated Levon. So he's been mixing it up a bit, but he is still down lifetime. Before beating Aronian in the candidates, he had never beaten him with white while well, he had lost like five games. But the balance of power seems to have shifted a bit between those two. Mm. Anna in good shape. Aronian, we shall see, won a game yesterday, finally we can say. After but he made he made hard work of it. He didn't he won it, but it was really thanks to Ponomari of slip up wasn't it i mean he was in bad shape but mm -hmm. he could have fought a lot harder right yeah well you need some help from your opponent but overall he did outplay him and then he won a better position can't blame him for that yeah we have the other game probably slightly less spectacular but our boy paco vallejo he plays against ruslan ponomaryov and that is his nemesis he's down eight to one i believe yeah, he's got a terrible score. Ruslan used to beat him up about 10 years ago um, when they, I, I assume, they're about the same age, actually. Uh, Paco's a bit older. A bit but, older, yeah. but played a lot as juniors. Pono got a huge score, but in recent years, Paco is starting to level things up, so that'll be interesting. I think the big thing for these two is they both lost yesterday. Paco, terribly disappointed. I spoke with him last night. And, uh, you know, he, he said to me, really, he wanted to cry. That was one of those games where he really, it got him. Uh, you only yeah, had, we could even bring it up very quickly. Because he, Can we well, get the he got in trouble in the opening. But he could have drawn the game quite straightforwardly, actually, by playing knight to c6 in this position, threatening knight takes a7. Black has absolutely no alternative to giving back the exchange. And here, after knight d4, it's just a drawn position at this level. And said he blundered terribly with knight to b5. Oof. I'm still not sure what he missed. And then after a6, he doesn't get the exchange back because knight a7 takes, takes, takes. This horsey ends up being trapped. So he probably did not have... Well, I think Paco sleeps pretty well at night, but did not have his best of nights no, he after was... that blunder. He was very upset. But, you know, he's playing against an out-of-form Ponomaro. I've really been playing some shady chess this tournament. Two games, not impressive. This is a good chance for Paco to bounce back and uh, get back into the tournament. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Paco with black against Ponomaro, he really has been giving him fits. And we've seen Ponomaro twice with black, where his openings did not impress all that much. He played d4, d6 both games. Both times got in serious trouble out of the opening. Yeah. Lost both games. But with white... I think Pakosh would probably be happy to not lose today. I'm not sure he's been in great shape before, but Ponomayev has been a difficult opponent for him before. Yeah. So that's what's going on in the Bilbao Masters. In other news, in the European Club Cup, got some really interesting it's matches. Big, big matches. One big, One big, big match, match today. Yeah. Did you learn the name of that Italian team? Pietro I can never say it. All right. <laughs> yep. They are playing against St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg, as the name indicates, has our boy Peter Svidler on board one. Right. 
He's facing none other than the fabulous Fabiano Carona today. We Peter can. Swidler, white. Bit of a marquee matchup on board two as well. Um, remind me of the board two matchup. It is Lenier Dominguez oh, against, Nakamura. against right. Hikaru Nakamura, yeah. I believe. And it continues. Then there is, <clears throat> I believe, Vitugov. He's facing Vashiela Graf. Vashiela Graf, correct. Then a <clears throat> bunch of spectacular pairings. That is clearly the big, big match of the day. We'll be focusing on that. Yeah. On the other boards in the Euro Club Cup, it's more or less favorites playing against underdogs. There is some interesting matchups on the first board, I believe. Sokar, the other top favorite apart from this Italian team. They're facing our friends from Norway, Oslo. The Oslo... Shaq's Club. <laughs> Shaq's Club. Stark <laughs> Sells Cup. <laughs> we can't pronounce it all that well. With Jon Ludwig Hammer, Simon Aktestein, those guys, but they are heavily outrated by Sokar, which features Mamed Yarov, Topalov, Giri, Wang Hao, you name it. So the one match between two favorites is St. Petersburg against Objetivo Risa Cimento on board two. We'll keep an eye on that. We're still waiting for the PGNs to arrive. Game of the day, no question about it. Vichy Anand, white pieces against Levon Aronian. Yeah, I mean, it all. it's a big game for two reasons. Lev still isn't convincing me with his form. And Vichy is in a rich vein of form, two out of two. If he were to win today, this would really be a huge result for Vichy, psychologically speaking, um, for the tournament standings and for the World Championships. Uh, what I think we're going to do, Jan, is we're going to, just for the moment while we receive the PGNs, go to the chess24.com website and do a little... Where's the website? Well, well, you can bring that up, I'm sure, if you... I'll, I'll work on it. You'll work on that. I'll talk to the camera. Remember, guys, <laughs> hashtag C24Live. We'd love to hear from you. Yesterday, your response was fantastic. We had loads of good tweets. Can we, we go have, full screen? We had some great comments. Please keep them coming today. We want them predominantly, of course. We, we want it about the chess, of course. We want you to ask us questions about the chess. We are Chess24 after a wide variety of different topics, from films to TV uh, shows. TV show. I've got, I'm reading one of it's about genetics. It's a bit weird. It's probably not, <laughs> probably not so vital for the show. Genetics. Yeah, I'm getting. Anyway, I'm planning to take over the world. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, and yeah, that's we don't the, like politics. We don't like politics on this show, so we'll avoid that. Hashtag C24 Live. Please keep the tweets decent as well. This is a family-friendly show, guys. Is it? Yes. It's only if we say bad things, I think. That's actually one of the things I like about the show, apart from the tremendous pleasure of it or not, like some chess playing kids I and know. watching with the parents. Can you believe that? It had you watching you and me. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> we love you. <clears throat> we love the family. We are that's what I'm saying. We appeal to the families. It's working very well today. It's very harmonious coordination in the colour. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna go full Thai every day. I, d I think you've got I kind a bit of got into the Thai thing. Yeah, it's a bit like, you know, when you try a new dessert or a new, I don't know, you some new food. And you, wow, this is great. You eat it three days in a row and then afterwards you're like, eh, maybe mm. I could eat something else on the fourth. No, day. I think I've reached a point in my life, I'm 35 years old. I've avoided Thais for the first 35 years. It's time to go there. You never really wore Thais before? No. Wow. Not even as a kid in school, they didn't dress you up in ties. What are you talking about? Huh? I went to school in Spain and was wearing sweatpants. They don't have uniforms in Spain? No. Oh, right. They must do in Germany. Maybe though. nowadays. No, I've never went to school really? with a uniform. Wow. Okay. Let's go to the games, shall we? We are going to Here we are. check out Anand Aronian. Oh, and this is beautiful. It's going to give us a lot of options to pluck stuff, which yeah. is another purpose. We got Anand with white. Aronian sticks to his guns, he plays a6. He has been alternating between a6 and knight f6, the good old Berlin. But a6 is really his bread and butter, the marshal. He's been getting into some trouble recently though. He lost to Caruana actually twice, once in the marshal, once in the anti-marshal. He lost to Anand in the anti-marshal as well in the candidates. 
So this line, which he used to be pretty much unbeatable in, he's had some problems. Let's see how it goes today. And Alan plays his move 6d3, mm -hmm. which at top level has really replaced the move rook e1 as the main line. We see d3 at the very, very highest level just as often, if not more often, than the move rook e1. And the good news we got for Chess24 Premium members is that we just finished recording a premium series by Peter Svidler on this very move, 6d3. Really? Yeah, he Fantastic. was here last week. He did a wide repertoire, but it's useful for both sides. I've seen parts of it on this move, 6d3, which oh. everybody at the world top plays, but nobody else really plays it, because I think the subtleties haven't been explained that much yet, and I think Peter is wow. really going to help us fill that gap. I have very bad memories of this move, 6d3, during my beautiful tournament in Dortmund 2012, which did not go well. I got crushed with this very move by Leiko and Caruana in two consecutive games. It's really given me trouble, and Aronian as well, because us martial players, after rook e1, b5, bishop b3, castle, we're quite happy. If they go c3, d5, we know our stuff. And the anti marshals have been trying a lot of things here, a3, a4, and so on. Oops, but white did not get anywhere very special with this. But d3 really complicates life. Because after b5, as was played in the game, bishop b3 castles. Well, there's a lot of subtleties here if you want to start with b5, if you want to start with d6, if you want to start with castles, if you want to start with d6. The problem is it always leads to a slow game where white is slightly better. You can only dream of getting in your d5 move. Here, after castles, white starts with knight c3. No d5, so you gotta go for d6 and play this kind of structure, which if you're a martial player or if you studied the Chigorin or whatever you studied, you're not that excited about. Yeah, I, I played this line a few times with White with decent success. Uh, and I played the way that most of these guys are playing with a3 because knight a5 is now a threat, ladies and gentlemen, right. winning. This winning is very position. important about the move order. If black starts with d6, yes. White should never go knight c3 no. because knight a5, whenever you get a hold of this bishop, the opening was a success for black. But after castles, e5 is still hanging, so you do have time to go knight c3. After d6, now this move a3. Doesn't look all that scary, but it's been all the rage really. a3, the point of course is to avoid this knight a5 threat, creating a square on a2 for the bishop. And while the position looks almost equal, it's not easy for black to find the correct plan here. All kinds of things have been tried. Bishop g4 I've played against once um, with the idea of going knight d4. This I is one of the was, main lines. I thought that was I thought that was equalizing, but is there a little? Obviously, Peter will have shown it. Takes takes, knight d5, and now knight d7. This is one of the main lines. It's yeah. played quite a bit at the yeah. highest level as well. I don't like it aesthetically. I think it's good try to equalize, but having this pawn on d4 always limits your dynamic yeah. options so much I'm with always, black. Yeah. So I'm, I've never been a huge okay. fan of this, but it's very much a matter of taste. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is the main line or how exactly they play, Something but I've never so been that much into having this pawn there. C6, yeah, I mean... C6, knight f4, I think this yeah, is a F4, theoretical yeah. one. But, okay, it's a different game, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of these guys are going knight a5 like Aronian, because after bishop a2, which is uh, knight a5 mm -hmm. first, knight a5, bishop a2, and now they play, they can play a variety. C5 was played by C5 Nicky Adams. used to be the main line here. Normally, if black goes knight a5, he wants to follow up with c5. But Aronian, he added this little subtlety. He started playing bishop e6 here, which looks weird to combine it with knight a5. But there is a point to it, because if you start with bishop e6, which is also a very theoretical move, now white goes knight to d5. And you can't take with a knight because after e takes d, there is this annoying little double attack. Well, if you start with knight a5, bishop a2, and now go bishop e6, now knight d5 is still a legal move, but it's a lot less scary because you can go knight takes d5, e takes d, and bishop to d7 or bishop to f5, even bishop g4 is a move. And this position is kind of playable for black. So knight is silly, but so is the bishop on a2. Mm. So in practice, after knight a5, bishop e6, they haven't been doing much knight d5. 
instead choosing either bishop takes e6 or b4. Bishop I'm takes e6 was Caruana's choice again. I'm trying to remember. And b4. I think Caruana played like this knight before c6. knight c6. Bishop d2. Slow move. Bishop d2. d5. Rook e1. I think queen e2. Not sure, maybe rook e1. Queen d6, knight a2 was. Uh, How do you play? Did he play Did with play queen e2? One? I thought he put the queen on e2. <laughs> Not Made 100% some strange sure. Move, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he settled for this maneuver, knight a2, knight c1, knight b3. Was it with queen e2? And <clears throat> I think it's no. queen e2 because the yeah, rooks were on f1. So yeah, it, it was queen e2, you're right. Let's just, let's just mm. give these guys an accurate portrayal of what's going on. Sure. Mm. And it was here he played knight a2, right? That's this was his new idea. Looks very goofy, but this... This knight is misplaced, and this knight a2, knight c1, knight b3 was actually very interesting. It was played against the very Aronian, so yeah. he was no doubt prepped up, very ready for this. Yes, I'm not sure about the move order if Karan actually started with b4 or with bishop takes e6. I think he started with bishop takes yeah, e6 I most think likely. So. I was wondering if bishop e6, f e b4, here knight b7 makes sense, but it's such an ugly square for the knight, right? Can't be right. Feels wrong, yeah, right? No, it feels totally wrong. I think this is the move order they, they did yeah. play. And yeah, it's curious. First of all, Aronia unhappy to repeat this, and Anna not happy to repeat it. Starts with b4. Now, of ah, course, knight c6, knight, six, knight d5, d5 so. and everything has gone wrong for black. He's just lost a couple tempi. Even this position you could discuss, but it's clearly not the idea of knight a5 to go back. So instead, Aronian took on a2. Rook takes. And rook takes. And now he returned his knight. And exchanging these bishops doesn't solve all of Black's problems, but it, was, it is one strategic goal he has. Because his bishop on b3 or a2, eyeing f7, controlling the d5 square, it is a pretty powerful piece. So achieving this is something for black. Still, let's see what Anand has up his sleeve. Because clearly Aronia plays his line every other game. Anand must have been doing his homework here, right? Well, he played bishop g5, which looks very, very standard to try and potentially exchange this bishop for the knight and get a grip over d5, which is a beautiful square. And then you can think about expanding with moves like c4, C3, D4, C3, A4, C3, A4, a lot of different pawn plans. It's not huge, but he's playing for a nibble, right? Right. Because also, if we keep the tournament situation in mind, Anand is up with two out of two. Actually, they're using the three-point system in Bilbao, which means he has six out of six to Aronian's four out of six. Of course, he wants to put pressure with white, but I'm assuming he also doesn't want to go all crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, there's no need for it, is there? So he'll try and put in a bit of pressure, but it's it's one of those games where he'd like to play for two results rather than one. Or three. <laughs> one is always fine, right? Imagine playing, just for playing for one for result. Win. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. just Let's playing play for, for one result. <laughs> or a loss. Yeah. So you play very straightforwardly, bishop of six, bishop of six, and knight to d5, mm -hmm. threatening to take here. Bishop, of course, went back to d8. Not of course, actually. You could think about moves like a5 or knight e7, but you don't normally allow knight takes f6 if you don't really have to. So Levin played bishop d8. And a4 straight away. And I like a4, that. a4, yeah. Accurate. Accurate. I like that. d5 mm. is covering b4, the knight on d5. So, And knight e7 looks like the obvious move to protect b5. Right. And now the question is, what do you do with white? My first instinct would be to keep this knight on the board. I think if you take on e7, bishop takes, it's just too little to do anything. Yeah. So I would expect to move like knight to e3, and then trying to build up something along the a-file, maybe even queen to a1, work with a c4 idea. Doesn't strike me as, as huge problems for black, but it's still a little more pleasant to be white, right? Yeah, it's a bit the bishop and knight and the rooks aren't uh, connected, coordinated, so c6 looks like the only move here to and me. These things can quickly disappear. Actually, if we remember the World Championship match, there was one game, Anna with white, this exact same structure and peace configuration against Magnus Carlsen. Anna went on to lose that game even 
Carlson, I think he went bishop b6, bishop takes e3, yeah. gave him a double pawn, and that did that not go so well. Game. Still, the structure From is three. pretty risk-free for white, and he has to choose a plan here. I'm kind of attracted to the move queen a1. Just threatening a takes b5. And if black has to play a move like rook b8 to address that threat, then at the very least you claim that a file. Not sure how much it is, but... Some hopes for a little edge. Yeah, I agree. A little, 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 that's, little edge. That's what's so frustrating about playing these positions from the black side. If things go well, you might equalize, but you're not getting any excitement like in the Marshall or even in the Berlin where you get a complicated ending. You're just trying to, to neutralize white's pressure. And it's, yeah, one thing that really stirred me away from those. A497, Vishian, I'm playing solidly, but he might have gotten a little something. A little something. Okay, let's look at the next game. Right. Let's look at Ponomaryov versus mm -hmm. Paco Vallejo, and we have a very sharp position. Going on here, another H3 Nidorf. Yeah. This really has been all the rage. It looks like in the Nidorf, they forgot about all the other moves. They decided H3 is really the top priority here. Let's move that pawn one up the board. Yeah. It is odd, but of course, there are sound reasons behind it. First of all, white prepares g4. It's really in every opening, you want to go g4, g5, kick that knight <laughs> out of f6. That is the main priority. And also, white has had, had trouble in the main lines. Bishop e3, knight g4, black has just been doing excellently, so you hardly ever see it. Bishop g5 is always the crazy what slugging it out. Main, main, you know, what happens to bishop g5, e6, f4, qu uh, knight bd7, or queen c7 first? Knight bd7, these lines I think white has some hopes, but queen b6 has just been a tremendous roadblock yeah. historically, which nowadays with the power of computers, I think white players have struggled to get something going here. I used to go, I used to be an old romantic when I was a junior. I used to play these main, they never used to play queen b6. It was this queen c7, knight bd7, bishop e7, you put your queen yeah, on f3, g4. Oh, it was beautiful, but nobody ever Some plays it. Some hopes there. Nobody ever plays it. Yeah, but at the top level, these guys like Grishuk and Anand, if they're ready for it, I think they might very well jump for it. Yeah. <coughs> jump for it, that doesn't make any sense. And also after bishop g5, knight bd7, as we've seen the other day from Grishuk, is very playable. So really, we've seen lots and lots of h3 against the Nidorf. Yes. Paco went for e6, also the move Topalov prefers, whom Paco has been working with quite a bit. He's, been, he's worked with a lot of guys. Paco is not so known for that, but he's been a second to many, many strong players, mostly Topalov. He's also worked with Anand, and he has contributed a lot of opening ideas. e6, g4. Why not? The main line here used to be d5, but they're not going for this anymore. Yeah, I don't quite know why either. There's <laughs> many interesting moves. Knight de2, I think, has been played. It normally leads to an ending where white is a little, little better and black can only hope to equalize, which is not so much in the spirit of the, of the knight orf, I guess. Takes, takes, knight de2 as well. Takes, takes, knight de2, takes, takes, bishop g2, all kinds of things have been tried. I think this knight de2, yeah, it's quite a challenging move. So they've tried different approaches. We've seen h6 here. Yeah, h6. And yeah. Bishop e7, this is the setup also favored by Topalov, bishop g2, and knight fd7. Might look a bit odd. Black is fighting for controlling this diagonal on the dark squares. Before his knight gets kicked away with g5, he goes voluntarily. He says, you know what, I'm not going to make it that easy on you to go g5, h4. And here is a surprising move by Ponomayev, one I haven't seen before at least. Yeah, I'm, I, this might be a novelty, knight c2. Um, not sure, what do they do normally? We've bishop seen bishop e3. e3. There were some, some lines with h4. Is this here or is this just plundering a pawn? Looks like it's plundering a pawn. But maybe I'm not, not so sure. Takes. Take some, probably some, some some trickery going on here. Probably can't spot it, but G5. ah, oh. beautiful G5, Bishop G5, 96. 
Yeah. Mm, f takes e, queen h5. Mm -hmm. Nice little trick. I think M we seen as h4, maybe even from Anand himself, just to push g5 anyway, yeah, grab possibly. some space. Mm -hmm. Grab some space over there. Knight c e2, interesting approach. Not the first move that comes to mind. He wants to bolster this d4 square. And after knight c6, he goes c3. Probably the point is if black takes, which he normally wants to otherwise, then c takes d4 grabs a lot of space in the center. Mm. Hmm. Still, it doesn't... doesn't I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good feeling for Sicilians. It doesn't look quite in the spirit of this, these lines why, to play knight c2, c3. What's, what, have, what have you got against Sicilians? No, I just don't feel them well. Have you, ever, have you ever been there? I've been to is Sicily. Food, love like? Bergamo. <laughs> love the people. Love, love everything about it. Do you like food, food is pr it's brilliant. Who doesn't? Do you love mm. the fact that Vito Corleone is, f is from Sicily? Vito Andolini. Fan Vito Andolini from the town of From the town of Corleone. Corleone. Came over on a boat. Mm, very true. I'm not sure that's a true story, but I've certainly watched The Godfather 1 and 2 around 15 times. Only 15? Yeah, each. Yeah, but that's not that well. Life is short. You, you can only spend like 500 a, hours on watching The Godfather. Are you a Godfather. Godfather 1 or 2 guy? I'm in, I'm in The Godfather 2 camp. Oof. Robert De Niro, young Vito, really <clears throat> pulled that one out for me. One is great. Marlon Brando. They're both, they're both one and two on my all-time movie list, but if, you, if I have to choose one, I think I like two. Are because they one and the two on your mo mo movie all-time list? I think so. I think really? they still are. Okay. Yeah. They're pretty. I still have to think if Guardians of the Galaxy pushed Godfather <laughs> one or two out of the, one of the top spots. What about the now? other one? What was the one that we watched? The, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn of the Planet Great of the Apes. Is that not up there? Nah. It's not. That's pretty good. I like. It the is basically the Godfather with apes. It is? Is there a wedding? No, but <clears throat> Caesar is Vito, <laughs> and how's the evil ape called? I can't remember his name. Me neither. Anyway, anyway, it's a good movie. This is an interesting position. What I was <laughs> originally saying is I haven't played many Sicilians with white or black, so I don't have a great feel for those. Knight C2 and C3. Strikes me as an odd plan. Another thing I'm never sure about, I think this is not a good time for it. I'm always tempted to go G5 Who somehow. Who does this? Uh, Put a knight on E5. Who does take this G5 there. move? A lot of players do it. Yeah. Rishub does it quite a yeah. bit. And all the knight of guys, that would think about it at least, just to cement that E5 square for a knight. Is it Gelfand who likes to do that? Sure he does. I don't think this is good timing for it here. It looks a bit scary. Short castle, F4. Could run into some trouble. That's a move I would consider for sure. Another maneuver that could be interesting is go knight d e5, try to put this guy on g6, maybe even reach h4. Mm. Nah. No? Nah, it gets hit. Gets hit. Knight mm. e5, you just castle. Yeah. And you just claim it. Okay. F4. I want to put it here. I'll put my bishop on h1. Mm. It's a beautiful square though. Yeah, but you, yeah. you're going to get hit. Mm. I think you're getting hit. Bishop Might E3, knight, Bishop mm. E3. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's I'm not sure about that. a lot of time, but I think you want to solve that problem of the D7 knight. I like so your other move. Piece, so. I like G5. I like G5 better? Yeah. Mm. I think Paco is contemplating. Yeah, it's not a word I like. Yeah. Mm. I use contemplating like 20 times every show. Concrete contemplating. He's weighing his options. Very good. How do you say that in German? Can't say it in German. Uh -huh. It's very different <laughs> languages. Like none of the expressions translate. Wow. Er wiegt seine Optionen ab. No, it doesn't work. No. Okay. Unfortunate. Mm, he is very sad. What about the other game? Have we got more? Uh, have we got more moves? Mm, I don't Moving know. and grooving. No, we he went 93. No, He's I such a quality player. Don't think he did. He, oh, did, he, did, he, he did, did. He did. He did. He did. Rook b8, and he took. Interesting, Aronian would go rook b8 deliberately. We were expecting c6, and then after queen a1, you probably have to go rook b8. But he went rook b8 voluntarily, and now after a takes b, a takes b. 
This is this typical scenario as martial players don't like. It's not nothing serious, but you can never really be better. You do have to defend. White has the open A file in a symmetrical structure. I wouldn't be you, a happy camper here. You know you say like us martial players. We're a community, we talk. It's this, Levon, Sargisian, What do you do? Do you, have, do you have a y annual get together where you have a cake where there's a, a pawn on d5? Uh, yeah, and then let's discuss what was your best sacrifice on f4. And remember when I got in this rook takes f2 checkmate. This. You're celebrating your best martial victories. And then there's a list of enemies like Caruana, Anna, those guys who are trying to take the fun out of the martial by playing these boring solid so lines and beating do? us. Do you ha hang pictures of these guys up in the room and mm. throw darts at them? Or? I don't want to go into too much detail, but some bullseyes of non martial beaters might might not be around and the room. And how, how do you officially get into this club? Because I'd like to know the initiation process. Do you have to have a certain score with the martial? You have to checkmate. Three twenty-six hundred players in the marshal without making a single move of your own over the board. <laughs> it mm. all has to be home prep. Yeah, of yeah. course. No, that's not true. Especially Levon, he takes a lot of pride and rightly so in his understanding of the marshal because he doesn't need all the theory. Once he gets an active position, he's just so strong. I needed all the theory. We got a to we got a tweet. Should we get off the marshal? If the tweet is about the marshal, let's it answer it. It is about the marshal. Okay. Guys, do you ex expect to see a lot of Berlin defences in the World Championship match between Carlson and Anna? It's always the obvious thing you're expecting and therefore you're kind of not expecting it. It's like Anand said, you're expecting to be surprised because you would think if one of the guys goes 1e4 that then the Berlin is what they spent most of their time on. But I thought the same for the last match. And then Carlsen just played the Berlin and Anna got absolutely nothing. Yeah. So that was very surprising for me. I don't know. The Berlin has been rock solid. No one's even breached it really. No. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it. You might They're see it once or twice. Mm -hmm. But I actually expect Anand to be fully uh, with white out with one D4. I think we're going to see D4 in the large majority of games. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. He is an e4 player. Yeah, but <coughs> you know, look what he did. He played one game with d4, and he had Carlson on the ropes. Probably even Very lost. True. I think we're going to see him play d4 a lot more in e4. Do you want to make a wager that he'll make majority d4 moves? Let me make some phone calls first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speak to your lawyers first. Exactly. We got another tweet from Paul Miko. Admit it, Lawrence. You're itching to talk about Scotland. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not actually. What's in Scotland? Well, they're having a referendum in two days to be separate from the United Kingdom, and it's very close. The polls are 50-50, wow. more or less. So what that means is that uh, if Scotland becomes independent, might even have to get, use a passport to get over the border. Um, all kinds of things are going to change. Um, my life is going to stay pretty much the same, though. Don't go to Scotland that often. So one show rule. Try to avoid politics at all costs because we're not all that well informed. Well, no, that's mainly me. I, I don't I have a clue about it. I anything. kind of have been following it quite intensely. Yeah. Okay, I, I just don't want to go into it. Right. Some very interesting yes and no arguments. I'm still struggling with trying to figure out what is a part of Britain. I've now learned Ireland, they don't like it if you call them British. Don't like it one bit. The Irish don't. Irish, yeah. yeah <laughs> no, the, don't the, do that. The, I've learned that lesson the, the hard Republicans, way. The Republicans, yeah, they don't like that. No, yeah. I think <clears throat> any Irish guy. And you also no, no, the Northern Irish guys. A lot of Northern Ireland are. are well, Northern Ireland is part of mm -hmm. right. Britain, right? I have right. to be very careful. Be very careful. Let me. I'll explain it very quickly. Northern Ireland is part of the UK, right? Uh, but in Northern Ireland, with all the trouble, there, there are the there are some people who want Ireland to be a one whole republic, and there are some right. people that mm -hmm. are still very strongly UK and feel British, and there is a. Religious difference, Catholic and Protestant, traditionally mm. is the difference. Another trouble I ran into on this subject recently, yes. if you say the British are the football world champion, 1966, Incorrect. are you offending the Welsh and the Northern Irish and the Scottish with that statement? But I think we only had English players, right? No, that's my point. You can say England was world champion, but not the British, right? Of course, yeah. 
Okay, <laughs> I have to. No, no, England won I have the World to Cup. Study this a bit more. When in you, 1966, when you, first, when, last, and only time. But. Well, hold on a second. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Mm. It might not be the only time. Whether I'll see us win a, anything in our li my lifetime is doubtful. We have a horrendous team. But they're kind of optimistic mm. about the future. We've got a few okay young players coming through. We're not like Germany. You've been engineering mm. this for, what, 10 years, 15 years? Yeah, we have this program. Oh, you have some good players. Raheem Wilshere. Stone. Wilshere. It's the only guy I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Champions League tonight. Then you have a guy called Ramsey? Yeah. No, he's Welsh. Really? Yeah. Oh, Aaron well. Ramsey plays for Wales. And Gareth Bale plays for Wales. So no, Gareth Bale, no. Well, that's a shame because that would really help. Anyway, Chelsea playing tonight. Champions League. Could not call Kerr. Yeah. Ah, German team. Yeah. Ah, well, that's frustrating. They're going to beat Schalke. And it's going to be trash talking from your side. Let's think about Vishianan's position. He just played C3. Yeah, okay. That's expect to be expected. C6. C6. I'm not sure I like C3. Feels a little slow. Why don't I go D4? Hmm. Oh, Sure. Why not? Yeah. When in Rome? When in Bilbao? There is the huge following of D4 in Bilbao? Um, yes. Okay. No, I think D4 might have been interesting. Do you takes, like the hats they wear in the Bilbao? I like the food they eat in Bilbao. I've, I've never such been. good food. I've never been. But I like the little hats they give them. Mm -hmm. After they win, you know, the, the, these uh, traditional yeah, yeah. hats. I, think these, uh, I don't know what they're called, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think you'd look good in one. Mm -hmm. You'd look quite you'd militant. Militant. Yeah. Did you ever do army service? Yeah, I was you in did? the German army. For how long? A year. And what did you do? They have this thing called, uh, what do you call it? Sports department. You played chess. I played chess. <laughs> I was in the army. What did you do? I sat at a table playing chess tournaments. Actually, it happens in a lot of countries, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Germany. Whereas a few others happens. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure about this D4 move anymore. Takes a knight c6. Looks like a pretty decent reply. So Anand. <clears throat> Went for the move C3. Indian Badass is asking, Hi guys, what do you think about current form of Vichy 64 the King? I think he's in terrible shape. That's sarcasm for Indian Badass. If you know, he's in great shape. Playing really well, confident, decent chess. We'll see how he does today. I'm, I'm with Jan. I think C3 is a bit slow. Now C6 comes and Black. Well, might not, not have been that much to begin with if we can't. No. Suggest like anything D4, smarter. Uh, I like D4. Well, D4 he takes and knight C6. Mm. Mm. It's never Not loads, much. is it? I mean, these positions. No, are once Black gets a good square for his bishop and coordinates his rooks, of course he's going to be kind of okay. Another move is always tempting is to play Queen A1. But I guess it also doesn't really lead to anything permanent yet. C6, Queen E6. Mm. I don't know. This looks looks worth a try as well. Rook B6. Back. Looks I missed Rook B6. <laughs> yeah. course, but, uh, still have the A file, you know? I'm always scared as long as they have the A file. Anyway, Anand played C3, expecting C6 here. I'm not sure if it has been played already. No, I guess not yet. Few tweets, a uh, few decent mm -hmm. tweets. Damien Domke, Lawrence, with whom do you train and prepare for tournaments? Who are your. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Who are your. I heard something I while you're training and preparing. Yeah. And who are your seconds? Mm -hmm. um, Damien, unfortunately, I don't have any seconds. People refuse to work with me uh, due to, well, the colors of my shirt, uh, my shirts, um, my personality. So I don't have any seconds. And um, I kind of train on my own. So quite a sad life. Um, from Freiburg, Germany. Nice to see. Where's Freiburg? Lovely town in the south. Yeah, in the south. Beautiful. Uh, we got a, a tweet from Anthony Orb. Love watching your show and listening to your commentaries. Thank you. Greetings from the Philippines. Love the Philippines. Mm. I've never been there. Never have I, but kind of have got this love for it. Mm. We'll, we'll get there someday. We will. And Claudio Mendicuti, uh, a regular tweeter. Hats are chapella. 
Ah, that's right. That's what they're called. And champion, champion, is chap a uh, chapeldun. Ah, that's the guy who was wearing the chapel or the champion. The chapeldun. 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 I like that's the a tough language. The Basque language. <laughs> you know, they've they've got the 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 one that they use that sort of uh, for political purposes. They've got the what's it called? Goodness, the general bus, not the general. What's the I don't know, the most commonly spoken bus. And then they've got all of these dialects. They've got uh, some dozens of dialects in a very small region. It's not similar to anything, right? Similar to Georgian or something like that? There are a lot, it's, people still don't know. Mm -hmm. Georgian or Hungarian or, or some random... Hungarian is another impossible language. Yeah, but Georgian, I mean, where is this language? Nobody really knows very curious. what's going on. <laughs> um, we got another tweet, Gianluca Picchieri. Uh, do you guys happen to know who's playing in the A group of Y Can Z? No. Z zero idea. You know? Some, some rumors, some but I don't think it has been confirmed. I heard something, but nothing official. And I don't think it's yeah official or fully decided yet in that all the guys agreed or didn't agree. But the planning is going on for sure. So yeah. no. Mm -hmm. um, and good one for you here, Jan. Shohuali. Have you ever played Anand or Ronin? If so, which do you feel is stronger? Jan Gustafsson. I've played both of them quite a bit. Surprisingly, not with tremendous success. I've known Levon for a long time. Not sure how often I played him in tournament games. I think probably three or four times. He once kicked me out of the World Cup, beat me there. I lost the first game in some nice opening preparation, then a draw, and we had some other draws. Vichy only played once. He Beat me with black was not a very glorious day for me. They're both very, very strong. It's very hard to <coughs> say. Levon has this, but that's mainly in my head. When he's in good shape, he has this playful thing about him. And at the same time, he's a predator and he's making it look very easy. And Vichy has something similar against me. He just played so quickly at the end of the game when he had a better ending. Just put so much pressure. I was in time trouble. And he just kept making good moves without thinking much. It's very, very hard for me to deal with both. As for who is stronger, I don't know. At the, this very moment, Anand certainly looks in better shape. Better shape Anand yeah. has accomplished a bit more over his career, of course, being world champion and so on. Levon has been the pretty much stable number two in the world for the last five years. So I think it depends a lot on form and at what point in time you catch them. We'll see today. To me, they're both terribly, terribly strong players. Let's check out the other game then, Jan. Have we had any moves mm. in Mr. Viejo? No. No, then we've, we've, we've got plenty moves. Plenty C3, moves? he went okay. H5. Not a move H5. we saw coming. Paco being creative. H5. What if white takes? White did take. Rook takes. Mm -hmm. What is he doing? It's interesting. He's trying to bring his rook into the game. The question is, isn't he losing material That's after knight takes saying. c6? What's going on? Knight d4? Knight d4. Sending his rook on a little adventure because it's a double attack against c6 and h5. If you go rook c5, oof, Ooh. this looks very loose. b4. Rook takes c3. Okay, hit it again, I guess. Bishop b2. Rook c4. <clears throat> Oh. No. Oh. oh no. Don't do this it. This is Don't nasty. Don't do it. Don't do it. Boom. Oh my god, and if I take, you're going to checkmate me, right? Mm, I have no idea, but I will believe Isn't the computer mate? that there is a checkmate looming. Check. Check. Oh my god. Check. Queen g6, Check. king f8, and bishop g7. Check. 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 Mate. Beautiful. You know what? I would bet a significant amount, of course, we'll never find out that Paco missed this very trick. Yes. Because he must have seen this knight takes c6, knight d4 idea. But if Ponomayev comes up with this b4 and then this knight takes e6, what a hammer blow. <sighs> what? Well, I could try to play rook c4 here. I think it's the same idea, bishop f1. And now rook takes c3, same. your rook just gets trapped. Same idea, bishop b2. Mm. 
yeah, your rook is just gone. You don't even get a piece for it. <laughs> just picks it up next move. Yeah, it just resigns. <laughs> this is resigns. So he would have to go rook takes c3, bishop b2, rook c4. And now, yeah, this bishop f1 probably wouldn't work so well anymore. A well, bunch rook, of options here for black. Rook b4, rook knight b4, c6, queen b6. Queen b6 is fine. Mm. Yeah. I say mm. fine, it's probably still terrible for black. I'm not sure, is there nothing better? Let's... Mm. Let's think, what are we missing? Knight b4, queen b4, and queen d2. Ah, and queen e4 check winning the rook. Ah, <laughs> that's a tough one to see. Queen e4 picking up the rook. But let's repeat the line, knight d4, rook c5. Problem for black. Apart from the fact that it looks a bit artificial what he's doing, really artificial, <coughs> even if yeah. white just castled here, I'm not sure. But this is the bone crushing line, b4, rook takes c3, bishop b2, rook c4, and knight takes e6. Obviously brought to you courtesy of the computer engine of your choice. But that's not a, that's not but a it's difficult not impossible to, to spot say. because no. it's check, 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 mm. check and mate. Once yeah. you see, the, think of the idea, mm. it's just over. Well, knight takes e6 is always in your brain as a open Sicilian player with white, so it's not impossible. Well, you don't even have to analyze this. No, I'm just showing the line again. We show, we, it's a nice mm. little configuration. But this is very easy to see. Once very you've seen easy. or thought of knight takes e6, it's just checkmate and this is easy to calculate. <coughs> yeah, yeah I think he's, he's in trouble. He's, he's, gone, he's gone a bit it's overboard. He's been a little too creative yeah, for his too own good. Creative, yeah, too creative. And this happens with Paco sometimes, you know. He does sometimes become a, you know, a, a bit too creative. This, I don't trust this move at all. H5 um, takes. And yeah, here he maybe he could have still played a slower move like yeah. knight takes d4 and knight now. f6 takes and now look for a way to get this pawn back queen a5 queen takes h5. But of course, his idea was after takes to take back with the rook and this knight c6 bc knight d4. This is the position on the board. Double attack yeah. attacking the rook and threatening knight takes c6. Looks like it puts him under very serious pressure. Bad news for Paco. Let's take some tweets before we go to break. We've got one here from Sanket Karagonaka. Lawrence, are you going to be commentating for the World Championships in November? I will be in some capacity. That's what I can say for the moment. We are in talks, but in some capacity I will be commentating, as will Jan Gustafsson. Mm, they won't shut you up. They won't shut me up. They, they cannot shut me up. Your voice will be heard. Mimo, Jan, do you still play poker? And what's the, the most dif what's the biggest difference between poker and chess? No, I haven't played poker for a long, long time. The biggest difference is that chess is a game of complete information, meaning you can always see, and both sides can see, the position on the board, and normally also know the evaluation. While poker is incomplete information, so there's a lot more psychology, fighting against yourself going on, Chess, you play against your opponent. Poker, for me, was mainly yeah about self-control once you learn how to play. But of course, it's also a very complicated game with a lot of math behind it. Now it got tougher than ever because of a lot of people really went deeply into the numbers. But I haven't, I'm not an expert on the topic. I haven't played for a long, long time. Okay, a few more. Uh, Pat McKinnon, I heard that Karpov never washed his hair during tournaments. Is this true? And what's the ch strangest chess superstition you have heard? I don't know if that is true. I don't know if it's true. There is, without naming names, there's a lot of guys who have a lucky sweater who, which they keep wearing until they lose a game with it, or more harmlessly, there's this lucky pen. I also do that. If I lose a game, I'm never using that pen again. And a lot of people get a bit crazy about it, myself included, as for their daily routines. like. Mm. Yesterday I didn't have breakfast so I, and I won the game, so I can't have breakfast today or I took this route to the playing hall, so I have to go that way again even though it's really? longer. Yeah, chess players are very superstitious. I'm not. You know what, if I, win, if, if I won a game that day, I don't go home and think, oh my God, it was the pen, oh my God, it was my pants, it mm. was my sweater, I think it was my, my genius, <laughs> excuse me, it was my genius that won this game. I could, mm. I could have worn a skirt and stockings and I still would have won. 
I think you should wear a skirt and sco- stockings I've for next I've got a bet. Right, you know um, Spanish author Jose Pepe. Jose Pepe? No, his Jose name Pepe? is jo- Pepe Cuenca. Francisco Paco. Francisco Paco. <laughs> no, he's wrong. Pepe Cuenca, who does a lot of work for our Spanish content site, he uh, and I have got a bet that uh, we are playing a blitz marathon match for one year. Currently, he's plus four against me after hundreds of matches. And uh, whoever loses has to wear a skirt for a tournament. So um, well, that's punishment for him. While well, you'd enjoy doing that, right? That's well. That's where I tricked him. You know. Yeah. I'm joking. You are you are a very experienced gambler. I have actually worn. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, let's not get into that. We uh, let's go for a quick breather, Jan. As there's a bit let's of a breathe. lull in the, in the action. We're that's gonna... one of the problems I spotted with my new tie style. You can't really breathe while you're wearing a tie. No, you need a good shirt. You need to invest in a good shirt. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with my shirt? Are you offending my shirt? No, you need one that allows you to breathe. Allows me a bit to breathe. More. Yeah. Nah, I can breathe a bit. You can breathe a bit. You breathe. Will uh, you breathe at home as well? Play a bit of Blitz in the break. Click on the Play Now button. We'll be back in a few minutes because there's a lot of games going on today. See you soon. Until recently, chess was like this. <laughs> chess Twenty Four brought you this. Live interactive broadcasts from top tournaments with computer analysis and video commentary by the likes of Jan Gula. A play zone where you can take on opponents from all around the world 24-7. Interactive beginners courses ensuring you pick up the basics fast while having fun. A tactics trainer to sharpen your chess by solving puzzles adapted to your level. Hundreds of interactive videos letting you Peter Svidler, Paco Vajejo and Hu Yufan. You've given up on that outdated computer? That's why there are more reasons to use Chess 24 Remove. A tactics trainer so you can stay sharp wherever you are. Computer opponents you can challenge even when you're not online. Live broadcasts of top chess events. And the half? It's free! Well, that's half true. Most features are free, but limited for registered members. For a mere 99 euros per year, however, you can step up to premium membership and gain unlimited access to our video library. That and much more. See you at chess24.com. So we are going to have a look at uh, a very good game, um, and it's right up to the 27th move, unfortunately, um, between um, Luke McShane and uh, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, it was a game actually that's very important to me because um, it came at a time when I was uh, despairing just a little bit about uh, about my uh, my chess, and uh, I went uh, to the um, to the London Classic to uh, take a look at uh, at some games, and this game it gave me the feeling that the uh, the chessboard had just got bigger because uh, pretty much every move that uh, that Luke played uh, for the first twenty seven moves was uh, well both fantastic and for me completely unexpected. And um, when you see something like that, um, it gives you the impression somehow that the board has got bigger, that, um, that your pieces uh, can't just do the things you thought they could, but they could do an awful lot more. And um, I had the same feeling, I have to say, when I, um, when I played uh, in the Olympiads uh, back in the, uh, in the, the 1990s, um, and I sat next to John Spielman. And there are all sorts of weird things were, were happening with, uh, you know, fianchettos and uh, weird exchanges and uh, bizarre pawn structures. And uh, I learned so much from it. And, uh, well, this game was, uh, was, for me, again, it was something that really gave me a huge amount of enthusiasm back in chess. Because I suddenly had the feeling, yeah, you know, there's a lot more to the game than, uh, than I was thinking. Uh, so that was, um, so I hope, um, hope it gives you the same uh, nice feeling as well. We're going to look through the, uh, through the whole game. The really sh- big shame about it is that, um, is that, uh, Luke, in the end, even lost this game um, because um, I think the first 27 moves were fantastically classy. So White started with e4, um, e5, knight f3, knight c6. It was the first round, so I suppose everyone was a little bit cagey. Knight f6. So the Berlin defence, that's what uh, Magnus is offering. Um, just this, um, uh, this standard variation where... Uh, you just basically try and, uh, uh, oh, I beg your pardon, d4, knight d6, bishop takes c6, d takes c6, d e5, knight f5, queen d8, king d8. 
and um, you know, sort of variation where um, um, white's trying to prove an edge and, uh, and black's trying to prove um, uh, equality. And uh, enormous amounts of games. And um, um, well, I think in general, you can say that black's doing pretty well at, um, at, um, at claiming the draw, basically. Um, so, well, um, Luke just decided to play something um, um, that's been played quite a bit, but um, it's not um, incredible. It doesn't look that uh, amazingly impressive. He went rook e1, knight d6, knight takes e5, bishop e7, just uh, covering that, uh, that uh, attack on the open e file. And he went bishop f1, castles, and knight f3. I sort of arrived around here, actually, and um, I, thought, uh, I thought to myself, well, there's one game that won't be interesting today, and it's this one. I mean, it's, uh, it looks pretty dull, I have to say. Um, what's, what is white playing for here? Now, yeah, very minimal edge, I suppose. Um, what he's actually claiming is that um, uh, these black knights are a little bit, um, uh, a little bit uh, awkward. Um, well, this knight on d6, obviously, is going to have to move in order to, um, to allow black to play this pawn there. Where should that knight move? It could move to a couple of uh, places. It could go, you know, knight e8 to f6. Um, uh, it could also uh, just, as in the game, go to f5 and leave the d-pawn to go free. Um, yeah, I mean, this first, um, this first uh, trip like this, knight e8 to f6, costs a couple of tempi, you know, so, um, so that's going to give white a little bit of extra time. Um, on f5, not clear. Knight's a little bit, um, um, a little bit awkward there. I mean, it blocks the, 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 the natural path of the bishop to, uh, to f5 or to g4. So you could just get a little bit um, uh, gummed up with your pieces, although you know, it's, it's hard to really think that it could be, um, that, it could be uh, that terrible. Um, the other nice, slightly annoying little thing for black is that you know, if you play d4 and if black eventually gets in d5, and this knight on c6 is, um, is um, not very well placed. Um, it blocks the c-pawn, and um, it's not really that black would want to play c5. Um, not that, but um, it's more that black would want to play his pawn to uh, c6 in order to be able to defend the pawn on d5. Um, and white can do that very easily. You know, he can just play his pawn to d4, pawn to c3, but black can't. It does mean that, um, that when a pawn goes to d5, it could just be a little bit um, vulnerable to attack. And as we'll see during the game, that's, uh, that was a, a constantly recurring theme. Um, notice, actually, that, um, you know, that, what, um, that this bishop f1 uh, idea, in, from that point of view, it's, uh, it's a very cunning idea, because this bishop could emerge g3, bishop g2, and then attack a pawn on d5 as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a nice concept. I mean, it's not setting the world on fire, but it's, um, it's more than it, uh, than it seems at, uh, at, uh, at first sight. And of course, you know, this move, knight f3, avoiding the exchange of knights, also fits the concept um, you know, very nicely that black's a little bit gummed up with, uh, with these knights, so we don't want to exchange them. So good positional moves, basically. But it shouldn't be, um, you know, you don't really feel that it should be a, a great deal. And of course, against someone like, um, like Magnus Carlsen, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean that's really. Uh, yeah, that's, that's just um, you're expecting that that would um, that, that would be pretty good, basically. So knight f5. Um, oh, the uh, move order was just a, a little bit different. Doesn't make a great deal of difference. Um, he went knight f5 straight away. Knight f3. Castles. D4. And d5. And now white went g3. Just um, preparing to put the bishop on g2. Also, what, um, what this move is doing, uh, again, you know, thinking of that theme of, um, of not allowing black to exchange off uh, knights, get pieces free, that uh, uh, pawn on g3 is stopping uh, the knight ever coming to h4. So uh, also keeping uh, the pieces uh, tied down a little bit. So Carson had to decide how to develop his pieces now, and um, it was something that he never quite 100% solved. Um, he played his, his next move, I'm not 100% sure about that. He played his bishop to uh, f6. 
in general, I, I sort of feel that's a um, uh, that's bad positional move, really. Um, the, um, um, the bishop, uh, you know, I mean, again, it, it's, uh, these, are, these are decisions that are, that are tricky to take because, you know, you can say that another square would be better, but there's, there's always, you know, little things, little reasons why that isn't. It's always just a, you know, a balance of, uh, of, uh, of possibilities, you know, and, um, and, and you just try and work it out. Um, the bishop on f6 here, I mean, it's not really doing a great deal. It's attacking the pawn on d4, but why can defend it with the pawn on c3? What it also means is that um, you know, the bishop on f can come to f4 completely um, um, uh, free, basically, on that diagonal. It's going to attack that pawn on c7, which um, is going to be a, a little bit sensitive for a while until black manages to move this knight away somewhere and play c6. What we also saw in the game, which uh, hadn't occurred to me, of course, uh, right at the beginning, is that this g4 to g5 can be quite awkward. You know, g4 chases, uh, uh, attacks the knight, you know, has to go somewhere. But, you know, if it goes back to e7, then the pawn goes on to g5 and the bishop is trapped. Um, I think, yeah, in general, it's not a move that black really wants to play, I think. Um, in general, you want to play a move like, you know, like bishop d6. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there, there might well be other reasons why that's um, not completely possible. Um, for example, um, yeah, I mean, I was wondering about stuff like, you know, going knight c3 and then going knight b5 and, um, you know, just uh, attacking this bishop here, maybe going, going to try and get the bishop pair. So that was quite, um, yeah, a big, a reasonably big decision, actually, um, you know, to put the bishop on, uh, on f6. So I went c3, just defending the, uh, the pawn on d4. And black went rook e8. And uh, white went rook takes e8, quite a natural follow-up here, bishop f4, what we said, attacking the pawn on c7, and queen on d8. So what was, uh, you know, I was looking at this game in the, uh, in the commentary room, um, and thinking, well, yeah, you know, white's just a tiny bit better, you know, it's sort of... Uh, um, that'll, I'm sure it'll be a, you know, sure it'll be a draw, but, um, but, uh, but White's not, um, White hasn't got any problems, you know. Um, and now is really the point that lots of moves started happening that I w was just not seeing. Um, and that made it all wonderful, you know. I suppose I was sort of uh, thinking a little bit stereotyped. Well, I suppose, you know, maybe knight a3, um, threatening knight b5. Um, uh, maybe you'll, you know, can come around to c2 later. I was, you know, thinking, oh, I'm sure that, you know, the queen will come to b3 and the bishop will come to b to g2 and, uh, you know, I'll get my rook to e1, you know, that sort of stuff. Not bad, you know, perfectly fine. You know, no, uh, no problems with, uh, with that at all. But, you know, the normal stereotype thing that, um, that, uh, that anyone can, uh, can think of. And, um, yeah, Luke, yeah, Luke came up with some great things here. So he played, um, first move was bishop d3. And I saw, I saw it and thought, what? I mean, you've played, you've played bishop f1, you've played g3, you know, you're going to play bishop g2, you know, you're not going to play the bishop back to d3. Um, interesting idea, really interesting idea. Um, the point is um, uh, just putting pressure on um, an exposed black piece. You know, you're just uh, attacking a, a knight on f5 and... Um, uh, well, black's got to do something about it. It's, I'm not 100% sure that it, that it, that it was the, um, uh, the very best move, but I don't know. I mean, it's really, to even you know, think about it, it's, um, it's quite cool. And the other thing that I think that, black was, um, uh, that, uh, that Luke was thinking about here was, um, you know, black is definitely going to play that knight back anywhere and then try and bring his bishop maybe to f5 or maybe to g4. And... His idea simply was that it was better to, that bishop on f5 was annoying, was a good piece. So it was better to exchange off that piece than to let it just exist. Uh, so what was he basically claiming, making a, a very subtle positional uh, um, evaluation here, saying that um, a position with, the, with this bishop on g2 and this black bishop on c8 on f5, that's better for, for black than if I exchange off the bishops. Um, and it's all to do, a lot of it's to do actually with, uh, with a bit of calculation and, um, uh, and a bit of tactics. And um, yeah, I don't know, I, don't know, I can't say 100% that it's absolutely uh, 
the correct decision, but it's uh, it's a hell of a call to make, you know, and uh, and um, yeah, an awful lot of imagination to come up with that. So um, uh, yeah, I mean, a stunning move. hadn't expected it at all. So black went knight f e seven, which is um, uh, a fairly normal move. That knight's not doing anything on f five. It's going to be redeployed, and uh, in the uh, and as well on the on the way, it's uh, supporting bishop f five. So. That was also very impressive, you know, no attempts to, uh, to try and stop this uh, exchange or anything. Just knight a3, threatening knight b5, yeah, we've got this uh, sensitive square c7 again that we talked about before, a6, and then knight c2. Um, and this is, uh, um, again, a very uh, nice idea here, just going to play the knight to e3, um, and if you get that in, then um, you've got the best of all worlds, actually, because, you know, you've got a bishop on this very nice uh, uh, diagonal here, and you've also stopped the black bishop from coming to f5 or from coming to g4. So um, if the knight comes to e3, that's, well, that's a nice advantage. Of course, you know, from e3 as well, the knight's attacking d5, so that's also very good. So, yeah, Carlson played the... Uh, Pretty much the, uh, the only move you'd expect, and that was um, bishop f5. And here's now the little bit of calculation um, that, uh, that comes in, a little bit of specifically looking at, um, at uh, the position and just, you know, finding, you know, ideas that, um, that just for specific reasons work. Um, bishop f5, knight f5, and g4. And um, this is a, a very unpleasant uh, idea. Um, again, we're talking, um, we're exploiting the, the, um, uh, the fact that these two pieces are getting in each other's way. Where is this, um, you know, where is this uh, knight going to go? Well, if um, um, it's got a number of squares, but none are really satisfactory. I mean, if you go knight d6, we're just going to come in with, with knight e3. Attacking this pawn on d5, and we're also coming in afterwards with queen b3 attacking d5 and b7, it's tricky to defend uh, all, these, uh, all these pawns, to defend the d5 and the b7 pawn. Um, remember that uh, you know, if black ever does something like, g, like knight e7, then we've got g5. You know, just ah, really, really nice spot, uh, this, uh, this, this whole idea. And it wouldn't amaze me that uh, if, if uh, Luke just hadn't seen at the very least you know, the contours of this idea when he played bishop d3, very, very nice. Um, what, could, what else can black do? Um, if you go knight h4, for example, I mean, you've got this move now because, you know, g3 that we played to stop it, you've got knight h4. Well, you might just take, take and go something like knight e3, for example. And again, you've got this threat, queen b3 or queen f3. And, you know, if black plays knight e7, then this, this bishop on h4 is, um, is uh, in, uh, in a little bit of trouble as well. It's uh, plenty of uh, unpleasant little decisions. And, um, well, black went uh, knight f e7 in this position. And, um, well, this is, when the press, this is when the press room, I think, started to take notice of this game. Because, uh, you know, up till now it was, uh, it was really, um, oh, this one's a bit boring, you know, symmetrical position. So when they really started taking notice and, um, uh, and really started looking at what was uh, possible. And, um, well, I did too. And for me, the, uh, the unexpected moves just uh, kept on coming. So, um, but, well, I'm going to carry on in the, uh, in the next video.